these uh, what look like steel spacers. I think they're completely steel. Um, when I replaced the eccentric nuts uh, with, on the bottom, I took the steel spacers and I put them on this arm as a spacer. Um, kind of like the, how the V3 is, because this one, the V2 didn't come with that. Just a thought for those who are thinking about doing that themselves. Make sure it is effectively tightened. I am not doing it with the screw side. I'm doing it with the Allen key side. Just pulling it towards me with a little bit, often resistance with the bolt. Or if you use the included wrench that comes with it, either or. I'm cleaning the uh, polycarbonate wheels of any excess grease. Sometimes it just drips down. Um, you don't have to. It just keeps dirt from accumulating. Okay. That's that. Off with the gloves. Now it is time to have the eccentric nut tighten to keep this from wobbling. Wibble wibble wobble. Wibble wibble wobble. This is the uh, Creality wrench, the one that comes with it, you know, your stance steel. Cheap old wrench. The small side is the 8mm side for those nylock nuts. The other side, the larger side, is your eccentric nut spacer. All you gotta do is turn the eccentric nut Maybe higher. until you cannot free spin. Oh, that's good. As soon as not one wheel on here moves independently, it's perfect. Okay, so that part is done. You out of the way. Now it is time to start shimming. And on this side, I could already tell it's favoring the back side. This is the general belt drift that I talk about. I'm looking at the top belt and the bottom belt. And see how it's beginning to relax in one place? Just push this in a little bit. There we go. Now, see how it's not rubbing against the pulley at all. It's sitting in the middle. And there we go. Now I'm going to go to the other side and do the same thing. This side is a completely different story. It's a lot of movement. Okay, so I'm looking under it. Remember those belts sit in those notches? It's too far this way. I'm going to pull it in the notch towards the front. far as it'll go. There we go. Oh, that just instantly self-aligned. Alright, so here we go. This is what I'm talking about. See how that belt drifted all the way over there? Loosen that Allen key up a little bit, and I'm going to wedge this out just a tiny bit. Tighten it back down. There we go. That's pretty good. That is more than within tolerance. This is not an incredibly accurate machine and within tolerance 
that is uh, probably within a millimeter or two, plus or minus on, on an angle, you know, millimeter or whatever. And for this size, that's fine. If this was bigger, that'd be a problem. Luckily, it is not. <laughs> if it was bigger, I'd have to be more persnickety about it. Okay. And now, take this part. So this is a little bit trickier and it's kind of annoying in some aspects. But once you get the first one in there, everything else starts to fall into place. Check. Still good. And now it hits the switch. Perfect. Another thing you could do while you have the machine mostly taken apart like this is check that these wires are still in good condition. Motion and time will cause them to start to wear out. And when it wears out, your stepper motor will start having problems and you won't know what's going on. It looks like a failing stepper motor. Until you replace that wiring harness and all of a sudden it works like new again. I've had that happen before on a different machine. These wires are actually not so bad. They're kind of robust. They're thicker. Which is good because it helps prevent that. Especially when exposing to heat. Ladies and gentlemen, I have mostly completed this. Yeah. It feels pretty good. Does it feel better than before? I'm not certain. I've replaced the bearings, so that's a little better. I've tightened the belt, that is good. I have aligned the belt, that is great. This is probably not as important to do as the bed. This is much more forgiving, mostly because it has a lot less weight on it. So that means that motion isn't, uh, doesn't affect it as badly. This is, without that eccentric nut being tightened down here, this plate would wobble. You see that happen a lot. And in fact, if you start getting X drift, lumpiness on your X side, Look all right to that eccentric nut and tighten it. No, don't question it, just do it. You might notice a difference. Worst thing that could happen is nothing. <laughs> I'm liking the way this feels. I don't feel any grinding. I don't feel any stopping or stuttering. Um, there, there was a debate on the forum uh, the other day about what is better the default black wheels that come with it or these polycarbonate wheels and my opinion is these polycarbonate wheels are much better and here's one of the reasons why here bud so this eccentric nut if you tighten it too much causes the uh, black rubber to compress and if you let it get warm in that compressed state you cause a permanent divot in the roller and you feel it, it goes tunk 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 when it moves along. That's a problem. Polycarbonate wheels don't do that as easily. Much more enduring. Much more harder. Less rubbery. I I like this. I'm just in here playing with it. <laughs> Stop playing with your toys, sir. Put them away.